Fancy seeing you here. All right, video number three of chapter three. In the past two videos, we looked at analyzing the effect of transactions and explaining if things increased or decreased um, and were perhaps in the debit or the credit column. Uh, the first video looked at some theory and application, and the second video was all application with one longer example. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the next three learning objectives, and we're gonna be looking to journalize these transactions in the general journal, then post, and then prepare a trial balance. I'll likely split up this next um, this next learning objectives into two videos. But again, this entire video will focus on all the theory and a little bit of application with the second video, so fourth video in total, looking at a longer example. Okay, so we are back to the recording process. Again, we're gonna, we've already looked at analyze our debits and credits, get them to see which account which sub account and if it increases or decreases that account. Now we're gonna to look to record that journal entry. Uh, we're gonna go straight to journal entry and then how do we transfer those journal entries into the general ledger? And then lastly, we'll prepare the trial balance. All right. An account. So when we're looking at our accounts, we have um, we can do a T account. We can do an account for every single item on our financial statements. Now, remember, we've summarized and sort of simplified for the time being uh, that all of the retained earnings, that is all of our, here I'll pull it up, all of our retained earnings rolls up into shareholders' equity. And from retained earnings, that has our revenues minus our expenses, which gives us our net income. Oh, one second. Gives us our net income, then net of our dividends, and that's what is retained in the company. So here are these two together, revenues less expenses, gives us our net income. And if expenses are larger than revenues, that's our net loss. And then we have net income minus dividends. I say net income because we wouldn't declare dividends if we didn't have a profit, uh, almost always. And so what's left is retained in the company. Retained earnings plus common shares equals our shareholders' equity. Okay. So no matter what the account is, we can, I don't want to say formalize it, but we can, for each account, we can create a T account. So the title of the account up here, so whether that's cash, accounts receivable, uh, bank loan payable, uh, anything that you can, you know, any one of our accounts. And then on the left, we have a debit. And on the right, we have a credit. So just like this is what we refer to as a T account. And if I were to put this into Excel, which I might, but I don't know, it gets a little clunky in Excel, but I do like me some Excel. I would literally just do, figure out a place to make a T and whatever account you want. Maybe it is um, cash. Sure, we like cash. In theory, oops, you would want it to be, this wouldn't, you would want this. Sorry, I'm playing around with formatting. In theory, you would just want this in between. Let's see, formatting. Okay, and you kind of have this in the middle. Again, no marks for pretty, but I'm the prof, so I suppose I need to just zhuzh it up a little bit. All right, cash. And this side represents the debits, and this side represents the credits. As we go on and we, you know, make our transactions, so for example, um, we had, last time we had debit cash for, I believe it was $1,000, and we credited, maybe just credited bank loan payable, $4,000. That was one of our transactions at the end of last video. And this was to record cash received for a bank loan, the one that they intended to purchase equipment. So we have this amount, and we have our cash T account, and we have our bank loan 
payable T account. We have T accounts for every single account uh, in our financial statements. And then we would post these. So what we're going to be looking at in subsequent slides is going to be step by step by step. But I kind of just wanted to show you big picture before we break it down. So we journalize and then we post. So we take this debit and we post it here to the debit. And since nothing else was in there, we say that the beginning balance was zero. And since nothing was here, we say the beginning balance was zero. And notice how I put this on different sides. And that's just because typically a liability would have a credit balance and typically a, an asset would have a debit balance. So I just put their zeros where they would default typically have a balance. Okay. So now I'm going to post the bank loan payable to our T account. And that is going to be right here because it's a credit. We increased our bank loan. So we credited it and it gets posted to the credit side, the right side of the T account. Now to, um, how would I say this? To kind of tie it through. So this did say, this is journal entry number one. And right here, we could say this is JE1. And this is JE1. All right. So from there, we could have a series of different uh, transactions. And again, we would be posting them to their individual T accounts. And at the end, what we would do is, sorry, I just want to make my T come back. Okay. And at the end, what we would do is we would sum up all of the activity within each of the T accounts for the entire year. So we would take a thousand and if there was more balances here, so say for example, there was 500, then this balance would literally just be the sum of everything here, 1500 ending balance. All right. But what if there was two entries that increased cash? So two dots and one over here that decreased cash. What would we do? Well, it is a sum of all of the debits, net all of the credits. So our ending balance is this minus this equals this. So 1250, makes sense. 1500 here, 250 here, minus 250 equals 1250 overall. All right, fabulous. Well, what happens if we're looking at a liability account? That is an account that typically has a credit balance. Well, it's the same thing, just opposite. We take our ending, which is equal to all of our amounts here. So again, if we have a journal entry here and say it was for $700, there was a different bank loan taken out. Then we take our ending balance and we sum up all of these. And we see that we have ending amount of 1700. Cool. All right, but what if some of the bank loan was repaid during the year? Okay, so what if we had a repayment of 375? Cool. All right, well then we add up 1000 plus 700, and then we minus the debit. And so our ending balance here is 13.25. All right, so cash is an asset account and bank loan payable is a liability account. I don't know why you're not showing up here. You're right there. You should, mm, guess where, okay. Mm. Okay, so friendly reminder, assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. That is our accounting equation. So why, if you kind of think about it like this, assets equal liabilities plus equity. Assets are in a default debit position in their T accounts and liabilities are in a default credit position 
and so are shareholders' equity. So debits and debits equal credits. So by the time you sum up all of these ending balances for all the assets and all of these ending balances for these liabilities and equity accounts, you'll have debits equal credits. Debits or assets equal liabilities plus shareholders' equity. So in a nutshell, this is our entire goal. We start off by, I'm just gonna go back one, analyzing each of the transactions. Is it an economic event? Great, record it. Is it not? Great, don't record it. We record all of those transactions as a journal entry, and those can be in T accounts or outside of T accounts. And then we transfer journal entries to their appropriate account in the general ledger. And from there, we prepare the trial balance. And from there, we go back to chapters one and two, and we create our financial statements. All right, so back to our T accounts, where we're gonna transition from, you know, the end or middle goal, back to our slides. So, friendly reminder, three parts of your T account, and there's a T account for every account in the financial statements. The left side represents the debits, the right side equals the credits, and it records what is going on um, for that specific account. What's going on in cash? What's going on in bank loan? What's going on in revenues? And we can look at that for every account in the financial statement. All right, I've already talked about them a lot, uh, but let's talk about debits and credits a little bit more. As mentioned recently, Debits and credits are the things that describe the action within the T accounts, or they can be just used outside of the T accounts. They're really used interchangeably. Sometimes people like the visualization aspect of the T account. Other times, um, some people feel like they're a little bit of an intermediary um, hassle step. Honestly, it doesn't mean you are more of an accountant or less of an accountant if you use or don't use T accounts. They're a tool like any others. So talking about debits and credits, uh, if we were to think back to the part of the T account, debits are the left-hand side and credits are on the right-hand side. And if at the end of the period, as at the end of the period, the debit side has more than the credit side, it's said to have a debit balance. And if the credit side exceeds the debit side, then it is said to have a credit balance. Typically, going back to our accounting, um, equation, assets are debits, and so most assets would have a debit balance at the end. I say most because, I don't know, sometimes you can overdraw your account and have a negative asset for cash. Uh, you know, it's called bank, bank overdraft. So you might have negative cash, it might stay in the asset, or it might become a liability, but either way, at the end of the day, if you have um, less, if you have overdrawn your account, you have negative cash and you have a credit balance. But in general, you have your assets that are all in a debit balance and your liabilities plus your shareholders equity all in a default um, credit balance by the end. And this kind of helps maintain um, and preserve the whole um, debits always equal credits and assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. So looking back to our T account, this is just visualizing what we said on the previous slide. You have your account, you have you post all of your entries throughout the, the um, period, so throughout the month, throughout the year, and if at the end, uh, the left side, uh, the debit side has a bigger balance, it's said to have a debit balance. And conversely, if at the end, all of the sum of your right side, the credit side, has more entries than the left, pardon me, like more, not just like, number of entries, but a greater amount. So, you know, an ending balance of, what did we say? Like 13, 25, just because they had some debit entries over here, um, 1,700 exceeds 375. We're gonna have a net uh, credit balance of 1325 in the credit balance. Okay, so linking back, and again, learning is, uh, repeated exposure to similar, same or similar materials and then applying them. So we're gonna do the repetition, then we're gonna be doing the applying. In general, our debits 
balances are for assets and our credit balance are normal asset our normal balances for our liabilities and our equity. Equity gets a little tricky because again, um, equity is like the scorekeeper. It's like, hey, how have we been doing for all the years that we've been in business? Well, what do you mean? Well, it's because that's where you roll up all of your income statements through the earnings that you retain in your business. So again, if we have an increase in shareholders' equity, then it's gonna be um, a credit balance. And if we have um, a decrease in our shareholders' equity, then it would be a debit balance. So I find this, this one slide is a little bit tricky, um, so I'm gonna skip ahead and then come back to this because I wanted to give you an insight that remember that our, what we're looking at before, where our shareholders equity is focused on our common shares plus retained earnings. So while our assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity, our debits equal our credits, our common shares and our retained earnings, where the retained earnings is the scorekeeper of our all of our past income statements net of the effect of any dividends uh, declared. So focusing here, when we have a revenue, when we make a sale, that sale um, increases our net income and it's done so through a credit balance. I'd say that the number one thing that students tend to, um, you know, trip, trip up on is they want to say, well, because debits are good because they increase assets, if we have a sale, um, then it should be an increase to sit revenues, correct? But it's a credit, not a debit. So for myself, I know that it took a little bit of memorization and then repetition, and then that became knowledge. So when I make a sale, I'm gonna go back to here. When we make a sale, we, and say we sell for cash, we debit cash, awesome, cool, they paid us cash, and we credit revenues. It increases our cash, they paid us cash, and we increased our revenues through that sale. So typically the balances would be um, a credit to increase revenues and expenses, ooh, expenses, debit expenses. We had to pay some salaries. Um, and that means that cash decreased. So when debits um, increase, that's gonna be a debit to our expense. So at the end of the day, we have all of our debit balance expenses and our credit balance revenues. And if we are positive, so say we have 100 here and 75 here, we actually have a $25 balance that's in a credit that rolls up to our retained earnings and is a credit and an increase to our shareholders' equity. Again, this is called articulation. This takes time and practice, as one uh, student pointed out on the discussion board, creating the financial statements was tough, but then she did it and she worked through it. And then there was another thing that was tough, but then she read it, worked through it, and then got it. So again, um, this stuff, nobody was born knowing accounting. Some people might like it a little bit more or might be like, oh, like more intrinsically to, uh, inclined to... Uh, to go back and read the text or ask the questions or like really to like dig in and practice. And then others of you will have to be like, okay, this is a fundamental um, part of my undergraduate degree. This is something that a, a tool that I want to know so that I can make sure uh, nobody's ripping me off. Uh, maybe this is a tool where you want to understand so that you can communicate effectively with your accountant. Again, most of you won't become accountants and that is a-okay. That is great. Um, you can go out and hire accountants later, um, or you can work with an accountant strategically to further your business. However, you do need to know the fundamentals and that will take some practice. The good thing is I know you can do it. Okay, so I said I'd skip ahead to skip back. So again, we roll up our income statement, net of our dividends declared here, and that's in our scorecard of retained earnings. So when we have a retained earnings balance that is a credit balance, that means that since its inception, our company has 
made uh, more net income than it's paid out in dividends. So we've retained more, uh, more net income than we paid out. And then that would be in a credit balance. And then friendly reminder, assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. So when I wanna think about um, whether something is in a natural debit or credit balance, I think debits on my left, credits on my right, A equals L plus E. All right, if you're still with me, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, you are doing awesome. Now we're gonna revisit our accounting cycle. We are going to talk about some transactions and practice them. But first, I just wanted to share with you some of the vernacular. Uh, when we enter a transaction, it's called journalizing. Um, it's kind of like coding, right? We're gonna capture the economic reality of a transaction and put it into these building blocks that will eventually create our financial statements. And then the general ledger, so all of those building blocks uh, get summed up into our trial balance. And um, so when we have them in our general ledger, um, we are going to post them and then they create our trial balance and the trial balance contains all of the accounts um, by a company called a chart of accounts. So, okay, pro tip, if you are a co-op student and you're in accounting or finance and on the first day of your work term, your supervisor is like, hey, is there something that I can do or give you, um, or maybe you're proactive, you're like, hey, listen, to really understand this business, I would like to see the chart of accounts. Oh my goodness, you will just like, you will have happy, happy supervisor. I would be blown away. This has never happened to me um, in industry. And if you're in an audit um, capacity, ask your supervisor if you can see the chart of accounts for um, either the current client you're working on or a possible client you might be working on because you would think this chart of accounts is the same for every company. And I mean, it's similar because everybody has assets and liabilities and equity, you know, revenues and expenses, <laughs> but it looks so different for every, every single entity. And just don't be scared. Um, we're gonna be dealing with, you know, maybe tens of accounts, like 20, 30 by the end of it. It's not uncommon to have a thousand or even 10,000 uh, individual accounts that roll up. They will all roll up to, um, to still balance in our financial equation, but it helps you get to know the business because it'll be like revenue. And then it'll be like revenue sales of basketballs. And you're like, oh, I didn't know we had basketballs. Um, or it could be a bunch of different types of accounts uh, receivable. You know, it just really helps tell the story of the company and you will learn a lot about it without even having any numbers um, associated with it. So going back, our general ledger, that contains all of our assets and our liabilities and our dividends declared, our revenues and expenses. Uh, we have a number associated with each one of these. And when we talk about posting, that's the process of taking journal entries and posting them, thinking back to our thing right here, taking journal entries and posting them to each one of their accounts. All right, it is time for some practice. All right, stick with me um, if you need to take like a brief pause and go get a beverage or something, that's great. But if not, dive right in with me because we are looking at Balzer Corporation. It's their first month of operations. Okay, first month of operations as accounting students writing tests, we are happy because that means that our beginning balance of everything is gonna be zero. Sometimes during tests, um, they'll tell us what our beginning balances are and we have to remember to put something in there. When, however, the question says it's the first month, we're like, oh, thank goodness, the opening balance is zero. One less thing for me to forget. Okay, so for this one, I would like you to, for each one of these transactions, go through and, you know, effectively work through the steps to journalize the transactions. So prepare an analysis, 
stick it into our equation. Is it a debit credit analysis? Um, then journalize it, set up the T accounts, and post the journal entries um, to this um, to each one of the accounts in the appropriate place. When we get back, um, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the first one with all long form. And then for the subsequent ones, I'm going to get straight to journalizing uh, the transactions. And if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper, um, check out our um, the solution down below because it'll actually walk through each one of these steps. However, I feel like many students might prefer to watch paint, paint, what is it, paint dry? <laughs> it's like paint strip, I don't know. Like you'd, you'd wanna do something with paint versus me kind of walking through relatively slowly. Uh, I'm gonna do the big highlights, the big hits, post uh, the full solution um, down below. And then if you have questions, oh, absolutely. Um, post your questions down below on the discussion board. We are here for questions. Uh, and we'll go over the big wins in just a moment. So uh, feel free to pause the video now and I'll see you soon. All right, welcome back. So as I mentioned previously, I'm gonna go through the full steps, um, which are actually gonna be broken down into two. So I'm gonna do the full steps A, B, and C uh, for the first uh, uh, economic event transaction only. Um, and then um, I'm going to end that one with journalizing. And then I'm going to journalize each of the other ones. Again, if you'd like to see the full answer and the full step walkthrough, if that's helpful for you, um, please go to the link below looking for the full step answer. And then um, I'm going to have all the journalized transactions for each one of these. And then we're going to set up the T accounts, post those general journal entries, and, and then find out the ending balance for each. All right, so let's get started. Number one, so what am I doing in the first one? I'm issuing common shares for 20K. Cool. So what does that mean? So this means, what is the basic analysis? Um, this means, so sorry, it's gonna be like A. That really means that cash increased and common shares increased because, uh, by 20K each because that's how I'm financing my company. I'm like, hey, cool, you wanna invest in me? Great, give me money, I'll give you this little certificate that says you own a part of this company and now you are an investor. So my cash increased, my common shares increased. Awesome. So I have my journal, pardon me, I have my accounting equation where my assets, I don't know why I did that. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Okay. And so if my cash increased, that means that my assets increased. My cash increased by 20K. Cool. And my common shares, my CS, increased by... 20K, I should just say 20K plus, cool. Assets equal um, liabilities plus equity, cash increased by 20K, common shares increased by 20K, fabulous. So now if I were to journalize this, how would I increase a cash item, which is a natural debit balance, again, on this side, our natural balances sit at debits, and our natural balances over here sit at credits. So when I debit a debit balance, it increases. And when I credit a credit balance, it increases. So to journalize this, by the way, again, it's like coding. We are coding. Um, did you know that accounting was the birthplace of information systems? Now you know. Uh, okay, and so we are going to debit, um, controversial statement, <laughs> it's gonna come, okay. Debit cash for 20K, and we are going to credit common shares. CS, I'll actually write it out for you because that's a little bit of a jerk move for me to do right at the beginning. Common shares for 20K. Normally, we would put a little description here. However, we're going to get quite tight for space, and this is it. So, this was um, the C part of our thing here. Oh, it actually might have been even D. Sorry, sorry, we got really excited. 
Um, what if it's the equation? Prepare the accounting equation. Yep. Um, prepare debit credit. Okay. So this was like B and C together. Fabulous. And this is D. Journalization. Cool. All right. Um, as indicated, I am going to focus on journalizing uh, the rest of this. So I'm going to hide you. Hide. Yes, we're getting short in space. We are going to insert you. We are going to call this um, by its date. So we're going to go September 1. Cool. That is our journal entry for September the 1st. Moving along. I'm going to keep going. Now we're going to journalize for each one of these. I'm just going to move this as we run out of space. Alrighty. So on the second, what did we do on the second? Well, on the second, we perform $9,000 worth of services on account for a customer. Oh, this is sounding familiar. <laughs> All right, but we're journalizing it. All right, repeat exposure. So if we perform services on account, that means that we expect them to pay us back, give us our accounts receivable. Um, we did, how much work did we do? We did 9K worth of work. All right, I'm gonna start actually putting numbers to this and I'll go up here. You'll see why in a second, because we wanna be able to actually add up these numbers. All right, so we did some work. We performed some services. We have revenues, uh, some sales revenues if we would like to be specific. And we did that for 9K. Okay, debits equal our credits. Our assets increased because they owe us money. Our revenues increased, which means that our overall income statement uh, increased, our net income increased by 9K. And that's to record our service um, services on account. Cool. All right. I'm going to move on to number four. Uh, purchased equipment for $12,000. And I'll put in the second part in just a second. So I'm going to purchase the equipment, which means my equipment balance went up. My equipment is an asset. A debit will increase it. So I have an increase to equipment by $12,000. And then, oh, I paid $5,000 in cash. So $5,000 worth of cash left because of this. And I borrowed the rest from the bank. All right. So that means that I have a bank loan payable for the remainder, which is going to be my $12,000 less my $5,000 going to be my $7,000 here. So I'm just putting it as a number because I'm going to be copying and pasting these things a little bit and I don't want to have any like fun with my formulas. But I just double check 12,000, 12,000 debits equal my credits. Fabulous. All right. Now on September 10th, what happened on September 10th? Well, on September 10th, we purchased $500 of supplies on account. So supplies were purchased. That means my assets increased by $500. And because I purchased it on account, so that's going to be our accounts payable, which is otherwise known as AP. And that also increased by $500. Accounts payable is a liability. So to increase a liability's credit balance, we credit it. So we purchased accounts. We purchase supplies on account, increasing our assets and increasing our liabilities. All right, where are we? We are right here. We are on the 25th now. All right, so on the 25th, we received $4,500 in cash in advance for architectural services to be provided next month. All right, sounds like we provide some architectural services. So our cash was received. So we're like, hey, thank you so much. Absolutely, we will take your money. Oh, but we're gonna have to defer the revenue. Uh, so deferred revenue. And this is because it's actually gonna be a liability. So deferred revenue, this is a liability. Um, so I'm gonna put L for liability. Um, maybe I'll put it, mm, yeah, we'll put it there. Sure. You'll never put that there. Normally, you'll just see it like this. So please don't copy me an exam. I mean, whatever. But it's a deferred revenue, which is a liability. This means I owe you services. This means I owe you money. Accounts payable, I owe you money. Deferred revenue, I owe you services. 
this is the same transaction um, where if you were to go buy tickets to Shania Twain, Shania Twain, you would buy them in advance. Shania Twain would have to defer the revenue. And then when she sings her songs and does her dances and you attend her uh, concert, then she will have earned your revenue. But until she sings and dances, she will have to defer the revenue. Similarly, if you are received $4,500 of cash for the architectural services that you will provide next month. You receive the cash, thank you very much. And then you provide the services next month. All right, you're doing good. I'm just gonna move this a little bit. I don't know. I'm gonna move it here. Okay. Because we are in a role, we are journalizing. Okay, number uh, September 30th. What do we do? We paid $300 on account and partial payment of the amount owing for supplies. Oh, okay. So we're going to pay back 300 of this. Cool. So if we paid it back, that means that we are going to be decreasing our accounts payable because we're, we're paying back some of that accounts payable. And we are doing that by crediting our cash. So those of you following along at home will notice that I didn't put debit or debit, 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 credit, credit, credit there. I guess I got a little lazy, I'm sorry. Um, so just to make it super duper clear, I will do this debit and credit credits right here. Okay. Uh, in accounting, in an exam, um, it is just kind of known and accepted that the first thing that you do would be to put in your debits and then you tab it over a little bit and you have your credit, debit, tab over, credit. Middle, all right. So, um, what do we say here? 300 on account partial payment, cool. Um, so we paid $300 and um, that means that our liability, what we owe them went down by 300 hence the debit. If we debit a credit balance, it goes down. And cash left us, so we're crediting our, um, our cash. Cash is normally in a credit balance. When we credit cash, it goes down. Great, cash left us and it reduced our debt. My question to you is, how much do we still owe them? Well, if you said $500 less $300 is $200, you would be correct. All right, last journalization, also on the 30th. Okay, so we collected $5,000 on account from uh, amounts owing from customers. So this relates back to this one. Cool. So we're getting cash, absolutely freaking tootly, of $5,000. And that is going to mean that our account's receivable um, is also going to go down. So we go from the IOU uh, to actually having received the cash for $5,000. And we are pretty happy about that. All right, now I'm going to ditch this little transaction thing because I've journalized this, I've captured this, I've coded this. And now it is time for us to set up T accounts and post the journal entries and determine our ending balance in each. So as instructed, we will go do that next. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my T accounts right down the side here, and I'm gonna be posting these over here. I'm gonna make a little bit room. Um, I'm going to pause my recording and come back with my T accounts, just because you don't wanna watch me um, smash these out. It's really just some admin stuff, so I'll be right back. All right, so what I did was I took our side, our journalization here, and I just took every single account that we had, no matter how many times it occurred, and I made a little T account for it. And then for those of you um, at home, I just kind of put on one side um, all of our assets and on the other side, all of our liabilities and equity accounts. Okay, so let's start posting. Oh, and on here I put the dates, so like a little section for us to record the dates. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna start posting uh, these accounts. Okay, um, so. Post journal entries to general ledger accounts and determine the ending balances. Alrighty, so cash. Well, we got an entry here for cash, and so we're gonna put that it was on the first, 
And so, friendly reminder, these are debits and these are credits. Move these align, sure. Bold, sure, no marks, pretty, but let's just keep it consistent. Okay, and because we know where it's going, we don't have to say cash, because cash is up here. And we are gonna take that 20K and move it here. Cool, and then we're gonna make it a color, because if we don't, I'll journalize the same thing 27 different times. What color should we do? Let's do a favorite color. Today, this will be my favorite color. Nobody said pink on our discussion boards. Maybe next time, maybe our pink, uh, pink people are holding out. All right, and then we have common shares, which was a credit to common shares. So we're gonna put the credit here, and we will put the date here as well. Uh, this was on the first, so perfect. I'm just gonna move you over a little bit. Copy pasting, made my T accounts a little wonky. All right, and because I did that, I get to make a pink. Fabulous, I'm done with this one. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna journalize all the rest of these. I'll do one more with you, then I'll pause the video and then I'll resume because I feel like I might lose some people. Okay, uh, maybe I'll do two more. Debit um, AR 9000, boom. What date was it on? It was for the second. And let's do the same, sales revenue 9000. Sales revenue was a credit. And these are the things that I wanna go through and I wanna go relatively quickly, but I don't wanna to go too speedy um, because I wanna just make sure that I'm not gonna miss out on anything. Okay, so I've done my debits and my credits here. Maybe I'll double check. 9,000 debit, 9,000 credit. Okay, fabulous, we are still okay. All right, now I have equipment, $12,000. Equipment, where are you? $12,000. All right, so that was a debit on the fourth. And then I have two credits. One is for cash on the fourth, and this was for $5,000. And then I have a bank loan payable, which was a credit on the fourth, on the fourth for $7,000. Okay, and I'll just make sure my credits are 5,000 and 7,000, which is 12,000. And then my equipment was 12,000, my debits still equal my credits, and I have successfully posted this account. All right, I am going to pause this video and come back. I suggest you start posting all the rest of these and then see if we have the same numbers. Talk soon. Welcome back. I had hope you had a good time posting. So uh, as you can tell, I just posted the rest of these to here. And now it's time for us to determine our ending balance. So if we go to cash, we that means we wanna add up all of our debits, 29,500, and all of our credits, 5,300 and take our debits minus our credits. So we know that 29 blah, blah, blah is gonna be greater than 53. So what we're gonna do is we are going to make a little ending where we're gonna do an underline here and we are going to sum this up. We know it's gonna be a debit balance and we are going to minus our 5,000 and our 300. So cash is going to have an ending balance of 24,200. And we can denote that by an E here. Okay, remember how I said we accountants are really excited when there isn't uh, an opening balance? And that's because we would have had to include an opening balance here, but because it was the first month, no opening balance, so we can focus on what happened during the month. All right, so I'm gonna just move these down a little bit. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna paste. Hmm. Nope, that was ugly. Okay, we're gonna go back. We're just gonna increase this by, no, we don't wanna increase, cut sounds. Ah, formatting, okay. And I'm sorry about this. Uh, it's not too, too bad. Okay, moving along. So here, uh, I'd like to do the same thing. I have um, my debits and my credits. I'm gonna make my ending balance. And so that means that I'm gonna have, 
going to meet my ending balance. It's going to be my debits minus my credits here. So I have an ending balance of 4,000 um, here. And I'm going to make some more space for my accounts here. And I have my supplies. And because I only have one entry here, I am going to leave that because that means that it's on the 10th. It's also my ending balance. Great. I'm just going to leave it because there's only one thing that happened in this account. If there was an opening balance, I would factor it in, but we're going to leave any single balances because the transaction is the only thing that happened. It's also the ending balance. Same thing for equipment. And I'm going to work myself up here to accounts payable and I am going to uh, do some work here as well. Let's see if I can just move this real quick. Cut. Paste. No. Okay. That is okay. Okay. So if it gets a little squishy, it gets a little squishy. We will not be too, too upset. My goodness. Ha. Uh -huh. All right. So we are going to go here, we are going to do this, and we are going to find out an ending balance. Our credits are bigger than our debits, which intuitively makes sense because we're on the liabilities and equity side. And so we will take our liabilities minus our, um, pardon me, our credits minus our debits, and we are, that's an interesting, there we go. And that is our ending balance for accounts payable here. Okay, we want just like a little bit of separation, just a little bit, okay. So deferred revenue, only one entry, and leave it at 4,500. Uh, only one entry, one entry, one entry, and we have our ending balances. All right, so um, what we would like to do is, yeah, just, oh, I had to work. I kind of want to bring you to the next step. I don't want to ruin it, but what I will, I'm just going to jump forward because basically cash is your ending balance at 24,200. Uh, AR, your ending balance is 4,000. Supplies, 500. Equipment, 12,000. Basically, you could just list every single account like cash and that would equal 24,200. And then you can go to the next account, accounts receivable, and just take the ending. Um, 4,000. Cool. And then do the rest for all of your accounts. And then that would equal your trial balance. But we will get there in just a moment. You've done so, so well. I know that was a longer example. Again, uh, the full completed um, spreadsheet will be below, link below. So feel free to ask your questions. Uh, feel free to, uh, to post them in the discussion board down below, whatever you'd like. Thank you so, so much. And we're going to come back and finish off this chapter. So talk soon.